Well, uh, welcome into the studio. It's nice to have you here. Thanks, man. And uh, just let me go ahead and get out this stuff out of the way early you on. You make such eye contact. It's like dis- it's, uh, dis- disarming. Do yeah, I can't, I, can't, I can't look at him when I'm on the radio with yeah. him. I always have to look down. You get lost, right? <laughs> you like you those blue eyes? eyes. <laughs> Is it disarming or disturbing? <laughs> it's unsettling. It's, <laughs> do most radio guys not look people in the eyes when they talk to them? Well, not that deep. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to tell you the story? Yeah. It's a it's a little long. Hey, we got all night. No, no, I I work with Bill Cosby, right? And he was my hero ever since I was a kid. You know, my dad and I always used to listen to him. So I did this. I got to open for him at this at this theater, and I was so excited and everything. I met him afterwards and everything, and I, I was all nervous. <clears throat> and he talks in a weird way. He talks like just shorthand, like he just doesn't use herbs and stuff but he goes uh, so anyways he's like uh so i'm like ah oh, it's such a thrill to meet you and everything you know and he go i go when i grew up my dad and i listen to your albums all the time you know we really love you so he goes he goes where does your dad live so i'm like he lives in ottawa so he's like so he turns to his his guy that's with him and he goes morty ottawa aren't we Ottawa? And so the guy's <laughs> like looking at his thing he's like yeah we're doing ottawa in august he goes get the man Number the phone number of this man. His father will come to the show. We will sit this man's father in the front. Now afterwards, he will come back and talk. To me. I am the man's hero. <laughs> so the man will come back and he will talk to his hero. So I was like, oh, happy. I was like, oh my god, it's the greatest. So then the guy gets a paper and then Bill Cosby hands me the paper and he goes. Uh, he goes, just write your father the number, the phone, and I will. <laughs> so I write his phone number, and as I'm writing it, I, I, I realize my dad died like 10 years <laughs> earlier. Right? Oh, so, my God. But like, I was in such a weird, like surreal <laughs> thing. Like Bill Cosby was being like the sweetest guy ever. I didn't want to at that point <laughs> say. Disappoint him. Yeah, hey, my father's dead. I didn't want to bring everybody down. So. <laughs> So I just wrote down a bunch of numbers, you know, like I wrote, I knew the area code, right? And then I remember, just wrote seven other digits. So then I forgot all about it. And then and then it's, uh, there's another thing about how powerful people get your phone number. I have no idea, but it was like four months later or something, and I was doing this uh, thing on the Drew Carey show. Remember that? Show? Yeah. I was doing some role on that little tiny role. And then the girl comes over, like the script girl. She goes, "Bill Cosby's on the phone for you." So I go, what? Oh my gosh. So I went over and I, I go, hello? And he's like, yes, the number is a man, a woman's voice comes on and says that the number is not a number. <laughs> so I said, I said, no, I keep lying, you know, because I, I couldn't at that point go, oh yeah, I lied to you. So I'm like, no, that's the number. And he's like, I'm phoning the number twice. Now, I will phone the third time, but are you sure that's... So I said, no, that's enough. I kept lying and lying. And uh, so anyways, I um, I told a story somewhere in in, uh, in New York, on, uh, I think on Letterman or something like that. And, uh, and then the next day when I went to Saturday Night Live, there were all these flowers. Like There was like about 300 things of flowers. My whole office was filled with flowers. And, uh, and then... Like two days later, I found this little tiny card on one of the flowers, and it said, uh, I'm sorry to uh, inform you that your father's long since dead, Bill Cosby. <laughs> 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 it? You, oh, by, by all means. Okay. First of all, this is my favorite two second clip, although there's no bleeping here. Okay. Oh, good for you. <laughs> oh, what, my God. That's hilarious. And now, sir, it gets, it gets even better. Kick your f- I want you off the f- set, you. B- now, don't just be sorry. Think for one second. What the f are you doing? Are you professional or not? Yes, I am. Do I walk around and rip that? No, shut the up, Bruce. Do I want? No. No. Don't shut Now, are you up. picturing him in a Batman costume the whole time doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down that you in the middle of a scene? Then why the f are you walking right through? I mean, it just keeps going and going and going. Uh, this this is almost a four minute tirade. What happened is his uh, director of photography walked into a scene, I guess, in the back of uh, another actor. Oh, this is yeah. on the set of Terminator, uh, oh. and and he just absolutely lost it. Yeah. So let's start right there. <laughs> well, that's probably it. that is that does sound like a mistake. Norm, have you ever <laughs> lost like a bad mistake? Have you ever lost it like this on the set? 
<laughs> and, and plus, if I was rich, I would just be happy. No if, matter what. Yeah. If I had money, like Christian Bale has money, I would just be happy all the time. Uh, I, I mean, would never be unhappy. Yeah, but if you had that kind of money, you wouldn't be out doing uh, comedy tours like this and having me stare deep into your eyes. Like I wouldn't I... even be doing that movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Norm McDonald, it was a pleasure. You'll this be a, is fun. You'll be at Side Splitters all weekend Except long. Except that part where you fell in love with me. <laughs> <laughs>